Kia and good morning and welcome back to Get Into Games LTL 2022. It is the final countdown. Unfortunately, we can't play this song because that is licensed and we would get DCMA'd into heck because of it. But just imagine that classic track by Europe playing right now with its 80s synth and all of that sound. I am still that guy, Xenoj, but today I might go by Zemo. Hopefully not the villain from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I'll do my best to avoid becoming that. And of course, I still have Kahu. Taps out Bennett today? Is that, is oh, that yeah. what we'll Yeah, we'll go yeah, with that. We'll yeah, go with I'll, that. I'll, I'll be my actual name today. Yeah, there we go. Um, how are you doing this morning, Kahu? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I feel a little sad that this is our last day, to be honest. It has come very quickly. Uh, it has come about, and we are here, and it is the fifth and final day of Get Into Games Aotearoa 2022, aka hashtag Giga 2022. And this morning we're going to talk about the importance of digital equity and how while the likes of Chromebooks are very good for, you know, doing your simple computer tasks, they don't measure up to a powerful PC. And today we have a special PC building session with our local IT professional and a friend of Digital Natives Academy, Ben Baker. Good morning, Ben. Are you there? Is production going to switch? Oh, there we go. Oh, magical. Yeah, you're you're on fancy. camera. Oh, it's just, <laughs> uh -oh. just like that. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? Not too bad yourself, mate. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to what you're going to be showing out. I'm going to tell you out there this morning uh, with this PC build, of course, with uh, slot one. It is still only 30 minutes, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the magic. Uh, that Ben is going to make happen. I myself might just gently hide myself away in the world of Genshin Impact while well, Kahu comes up with some brilliant questions, as she always does. But of course, the first one we'll start off with there, Ben, is who are you and what do you do? So I'm Ben. I'm basically an IT professional. I have been one for oh, at least 10 years now. Oh. Effectively, yeah. We do everything from building computers to repairing computers, servers, networks, you name it. If it's got IT in it, we've done it. Just like that. Is it like, if it's IT, he's done it. There you go. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now, of course, morning to everyone in the chat out there. Yes, we are going to be, well, Ben is going to be building a PC. Uh, knowing myself, I, I would I would probably break it. Uh, we do see some ha-hoos in the chat. <laughs> And uh, some Zenus. <laughs> she is uh, co uh, today. Uh, she is co. Um, so that's very good. So um, what what is your background there, Ben? How did you end up in this world of IT and building computers? Where did you start from? Well, effectively, I've always liked pulling things to pieces. <laughs> somewhat, Sometimes putting them back together somewhat successfully. Yeah. Somewhat being the key word there. But I've always liked dismantling things. So I've always right. had that mechanical side to me. But um, studied for a few years at Wairaki here in Rotorua to get uh, the basic training. And then effectively I've worked for a couple of different IT companies over the years before starting my own. Um, oh. Now I'm out on my own, it's a, a lot more fun and a lot more stressful. <laughs> <laughs> we do love uh, some free stress that comes with the job. Um, but in, on that same note, you know, because you said you're now independent and, and you feel like you're in control, do you think that's an easier way to alleviate the stresses that come with the job? Yes and no. If you work for yourself, you make the decisions, which is always yeah. the good part about it. If you right. work for someone, obviously, you've always got to do what they're after. Mm. But if you work for yourself, you get to make your own decisions. It does alleviate the stress there. The other side of the coin is you're always on call. No. IT. You take all the risk as well. That's it. <laughs> IT doesn't have a uh, nine to five shift. IT is 24-7. Yeah, it is. And I guess that would also apply to the kind of contracts you'd set up with people. Um, we're seeing in the chat, Lava Berry Fox is saying, um, what are the specs? I'm sure Ben will get around to that once we start building. Um, and that Lava Berry also said, I kind of broke my parents' PC, but I fixed it with lots of YouTube tutorials, um, which has kind of been like a prominent thing this week, you know, that we have access to so much knowledge out there on the internet that you can fix anything. I myself, been back in the day, I broke our family computer because I accidentally deleted all the virtual drivers. So I basically had to rebuild awesome. Windows. <laughs> Look, I was just trying to uninstall the joystick that I had installed to play like some plane simulator. And I was like, I don't need all these virtual drivers. Delete, delete, delete. Yep. We've and uh, there. we've yeah, all done that. Yeah, Windows did not want to boot <laughs> after that. Um, so as for what we're doing this morning, uh, tell us about this PC that we will be looking at. And that so rather than a little bit of building, it's probably better if we go through the individual parts, sort of what you're going to need for a computer. Nice. Um, it is a lot more straightforward than it used to be. There's a lot less things you need to worry about. 
Right. Um, and that sort of thing. It all depends on sort of whether or not the kids are after getting into gaming straight away, which I'm willing to bet is probably the driving factor. Everyone loves <laughs> to play some games, so. Mm. Well, I, say, I say, have we got have we got the magic, Marcus? Oh, we've got the magic. There it is. Magic. The, the magic. Uh, so, so can you tell us about what we're looking at right here, right now, in terms of parts? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things. Obviously, we've got a whole computer here, which I should be able to move across so you can see a little bit easier, which the whole computer, it's pretty straightforward. It's still got a CD-ROM drive in it, which I don't think a lot of people will see these days or even know or use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. But effectively, you've got a standard power supply, motherboard. The CPU is always hidden underneath the fan right here. Now, the fan could be different because a lot of people sometimes use water cooling, air cooling. There are other differences there. For starting off, you'd probably be fine with an air cooler, but a lot of pre-built or custom-built machines generally have a water cooling thing, so you can get the fancy RGB sort of going on, make it a little bit prettier. Yep. Um, and then, of course, you've got the memory set down here in the socket right here. Um, normally, you've also got a solid state and a graphics card. This one currently doesn't have them put in because it makes it a little bit easier to show where everything is. Mm -hmm. A solid state, they come in a couple of different forms. You've got this one here. This is a standard, what we call two and a half inch solid state, named mm -hmm. aptly for its two and a half inches in size. Yep. Makes it easy. Other ones you can get are an M.2, which generally slot into the bottom of the motherboard here. Mm -hmm. M.2s are generally a bit faster, but to be honest, either of these will get you going when you're starting out. And then, of course, you've got the bigger piece, which is generally the most expensive, which is a graphics card. <laughs> it's generally the most expensive and also the one that generally everyone is worried about putting into the computer because it's, if it's the one you break, you're generally dropping anywhere from 1000 to $2,000. Mm. So uh, don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is how far can we drop it? before it breaks. Uh, this one here is actually not operational, so you can feel oh, free to throw it. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> but that working ones, generally try yeah. not to drop them even a little bit. Yeah, yeah, especially because um, a lot of different cases these days can mix between um, either mounting it on the board directly or doing a vertical mount off the board with an extender, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, there's, there's more situations where people could definitely end up... Um, yeah, dropping their very expensive GPU. Um, oh, we've, yeah. We've got Lava Berry Fox saying, imagine he forgot to wipe his hands and drop it. It's not functioning, so that's good. Yeah, we're, it, we're it, fine it, with it. It wouldn't be the first time I have dropped hardware. Um, we and have, a, have a quick one here, Ben. They say, um, we have Steam Root saying, water cooling does kind of suck. And what do you think in terms of cooling for computers? What's your preferred um, way of keeping uh, your CPU cool? Um, personally, I always prefer water cooling because you will get a cooler CPU. But if you're lazy like me, you can get what's known as an all-in-one, which yes, means it comes yeah. as a kit. It's nice and easy to install. You don't have to yeah. go through the nightmare that is custom water cooling loops. Yeah. I've been there and done that. It was, yeah, a nightmare. You've got to keep them clean, custom built pipes. It's yeah. a lot of work. Um, generally, you end up having to replace the water in them every 12 months as well, which mm. is an annoying process by itself. Very time consuming, and of course, when you're dealing with water, you've also got to worry about dropping it on the electronics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, because there's also the um, the other form of of liquid cooling, right? Which is more like a sort of oil that. Um, yeah, so you use a mineral oil. oil. Yeah, yeah so it's mineral oil, and everything's submerged. Um, yeah. Honestly, every time I see that, it goes against everything I know because it's like, don't put something in liquid, but <laughs> yes. it is extremely effective. But the downside to it is it's extremely expensive. Mm. Now, I remember back in the day, again, showing my age, um, but, we, you know, we had to wear bands to avoid uh, magnetizing the boards. With where yep. technology is right now, um, there's less chance of that happening, right? Or it can take... There is less chance charge. of it. Uh, it is less chance of yeah. it. It is known an anti-static strap. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm not wearing one is because you also can develop the habit of earthing yourself when you touch the case every time you do something. <laughs> so you can earth yourself every time you use yeah. it. You can still get the anti-static traps. I do have them in the work vehicle with me. They do follow me around. Yeah. Um, they are generally what I'd suggest is if you're new to using computers or working yeah. on them, definitely wear one. Yeah. Because you've got that guarantee you are earth the whole time. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that would be nuts if that actually happened. Um, so the motherboard we're looking at inside that unit, what's that size of that motherboard right now? Uh, that one there is an M80X. M80X. For anyone in the chat, let us know if you know what M80X is or if you've built one because we'd love to see what you guys uh, know out there in regards to PC building. We do actually have a question there, Ben. Uh, Bob Slayer uh, 20,000 is asking, what do you mean by Earth Yourself? 
Um, so effectively you're grounding yourself so you no longer have any static electricity traveling around because static discharge is what kills electronics. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most common things that can kill it, so don't be running around on a wall carpet with socks and then touch your computer. <laughs> That's exactly. one of the most common ways you'll go bang. <laughs> I just, I, I've always just envisaged a person like doing the sock trick, right, on their carpet, and then just like walking towards the computer and then just like touching it and just completely like like overcharging the unit. And I, I always find that would, would just be very funny. Um, we have uh, Willa just saying that MATX is micro ATX. That is great. Um, th yeah, there you go. And they just it said, is, is that what MATX means? Yes, you got it in one. Uh, so great stuff. Uh, Xeno Access Studios says, yeah, I was going to guess micro ATX. So yes, you did get that right. Um, folks, so what else have we got in this unit at the moment? Or I see there's a MOBO that's actually removed outside of the case. Where did that one come from? Uh, that is off another spare machine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have hundreds of pieces of equipment flying around. This yeah. is an older one. But effectively, it makes it a little bit easier. So you can see the CPU sat in the socket below where the stock standard mm. fan would be set. And normally, CPUs are set in a socket like this that can get released, and then they can be removed. Now, CPUs can only be fitted into a socket one way. If you have to force it, it's not going in the right way, and please don't force it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the very easy way to lose a $400 processor. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, yeah. I feel like a lot of because there's also that thing that people have right because there are certain um, mechanisms within the board that do need to have a crunch to it before it fully secures. Um, yeah, and I, I think a lot of people don't like to be very firm with their installing hardware, but in some cases you have to, especially RAM like memory sticks. Sometimes, yep. yeah, those need a bit of gentle uh, force. To yeah, they need a decent amount place. of force, but it's yeah. being steady and not applying mm. pressure to an angle. Because if you apply it to an angle on what we call a dim slot, which is what mother, uh, what memory mm. slots into, it will snap. And I have seen a lot of snap dim slots over the years. <laughs> <laughs> no. When the people yep. just bring you into the shop, hey, I don't know what happened. How yeah. Did, how did this I was, just putting, I was just putting a new stick of ram in, and this is what it looks like now. Oh my gosh. Well, on that note, I would love, if you have any particular nightmare story, I would love to hear that right now. Because, you know, we've heard the classic stories of somehow a rat got into the computer, somehow there's a cockroach nest in the computer. Have you done any, like, clean jobs or rebuild jobs that were just like, I did not want to do, I did not sign up for this? basically um, not myself but i do remember mm. a technician that i used to work with over the years did bring in a uh, computer where a mouse had gotten toasted in the graphics card oh, that smell man. was not great <laughs> wow. so yeah so did it so the graphics card typically has some space around it too so yep. did it get into the graphics card housing it got into the graphics card's housing. Oh, so we and then mouth proceeded to. Our PCs as well. Is that what you're saying? Ah, well, <laughs> it was pretty effective getting in there because it got electrocuted and wow. then got cooked. Not that, ideal. That is incredible. <laughs> that is a story and a half, I tell you. We've got a poor mouse in the chat. Yes, poor mouse. Um, no desktop. Somebody has said disgusting. Uh, which, you know, fear, but um, I don't think the mouse knew what was happening. It would have only experienced um, the warm air uh, coming from the GPU, because GPUs are very warm units. Um, as for yourself, Ben, what is your personal PC you have at home? Can you give us um, the build details and a description of, of how that much is... power you have under the hood? <laughs> That's a tricky question, mm. um, because it also falls under which one? Oh, oh. <laughs> man, flexing. Yeah, that's it. Um, Holy heck. So well, let's say your main gaming unit then. Uh, look, we'll go with the one that's currently operational. Would probably be the better way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the one that is currently working at the moment mm. has got just a stock standard uh, 3080 in it, an i7 processor, ninth generation. Nice. Nice. The motherboard that obviously lines up with it, and 32 gigs of RAM, because I personally don't see any need for more than that, yet. <laughs> um, yet being the keyword there, it is only two mm. sticks, so there's another two sticks of uh, expandable space there. Mm -hmm. And then roughly about four terabytes of solid state storage. Oof. Man, it's built. <laughs> what about you, Kahu? Do you recall what your build at home is? Um, so I'm one of those people who have always bought my PCs pre-made. I've been through maybe about four proper PCs um, and I've got a gaming laptop as well. Nice. Um, but I always just buy mine 
pre-made and for me it's safer because i am just too nervous to open up and just play around the only time i've really opened up um my like tower yeah. is to clean the dust with air compressor but i still feel i, I feel like what you're doing right now though <laughs> yep. do you know what i mean even though i'm just taking the the lid off i guess so yeah. Oh, look, and to be honest, if you've not got a lot of experience with computers or you're worried, going a pre-built or buying a second-hand unit if you're just getting started out would be my suggestion. Um, simply for the fact that a lot of people don't have three, dollars $400 to throw around if they accidentally break a dim slot or put the CPU in the motherboard slot wrong. Or the water cooler starts leaking, which I have had happen. Brand new water cooler decides to start leaking as soon as it goes in. You've never seen a person move so fast to get that out of a computer. <laughs> no way. That's, yep. yeah. That is, oh, yeah, no, I hate that. I hate, I would hate if that ever happened to me. Uh, we see in the chat, if you don't earth, you can kill the computer. Yes, that is um, what Ben touched on earlier when he was um, questioning about what it means to earth or ground yourself um, when working with electronics. Um, we have, we have Poggers in the chat. Oh, somebody celebrating a 3080 there, uh, Ben. So they, they were very stoked with that. <laughs> Um, D Chambi saying it's echoing. Sorry, Kahu and I are just too powerful. We apologize for that. Maybe we're too close. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe we're too close. That's true. It's been that way the whole week, too. I've been like, no, go away. Um, as for myself, I have the, yeah, I've, I've, I'm also pre built um, just because I, I didn't really need too much. Um, I just needed a, basically a good content unit myself. Um, it has the AMD Ryzen 5800X, um, 8 core with 16 threads, with a 3070 card inside and 32 gigs of RAM. And then I only have a 1 terabyte um, M2 SSD inside. Um, and thankfully, I have really good friends at Logitech. So like I said earlier in the week, they gave me the, like, the Mintus mouse and keyboard which has, I, I know it's your favorite thing, Ben. I, I have far too many flashing lights around my unit, but I love it. <laughs> and I don't know if I told you um, guys on stream, I have a My Hero Academia PC case. So it's just like all yellow. Sometimes I make it green to represent Deku, because why not? Um, but yeah, I, I find it very fun. Uh, stream says, Zeno, your bed would be the thing to blow up the computer. Very true. I actually have to... Um, put it inside a little cloth when I'm working on my computer because uh, it may blow it up. Um, it's a fire is, hazard. Yeah, yeah, um, it is a fire thing, hazard. One thing is like we're talking a lot about building PCs for gaming, but actually there's um, other reasons to have a PC with that much power, right? Like I've done a little bit of video editing and been able to render it with the computer, with the power that my computer has has been really mm. useful. So. Yeah, there's other uses, right? Yeah, there's definitely other uses. Obviously, you've got your standard business office sort of uh, computers, but when you come to rendering and that sort of thing, a gaming computer is generally what people go towards because obviously it's got a lot more performance. There are other graphics cards and that sort of thing that can fall under that spectrum as well. So a lot of people know your 3080s and that sort of thing. Um, but there's also Quadro series and those sorts of cards which are actually tiered towards rendering and they're used in 3D design constantly. So that's also the other thing to look out for, because someone might accidentally buy a Quadro card, think it's great for gaming, and then pull 10 frames per second on Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> so it wouldn't be ideal. Um, we have in the chat, Loveberry saying, um, yeah, I have a GT 1038 gig RAM, uh, 500 gig of storage, and an i5 2400. It's pretty good. They wanted to know, Ben, if you think that hardware is good. Yeah, so the i5, the 2400 is a second gen processor. Mm -hmm. um, still a great processor. I actually had the exact same one before mm -hmm. I moved on to a 6 gen i7. Nice. Um, personally, it's perfectly good as an energy grade machine and it'll play just about everything you're after. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when things start to stutter or freeze up, that's when you'll want to uh, increase your sort of specifications by upgrading the processor, it would probably be the first port there. But yeah. the other side of the coin is when you go to upgrade those, you generally have to do the motherboard and the RAM at the same time, so it can be a bit mm. of a costly expenditure. Yeah, especially with where um, our, if the CPUs are going now, it feels like if you buy one of the new, like more recent um, processing units, you're probably going to have to upgrade your MOBO, is that correct, Ben? Without a doubt. And the way they're going is the pricing is ridiculous at the moment. Like $600 yeah. for a processor is quite a lot of money to spend. That is a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. I know. I I wonder if that's um in part. Unfortunately, we are still still dealing with those hardware issues uh, globally, uh, which of course most of you would probably know is the thing that affects 
uh, PlayStation 5 reaching market very quickly because they have a shortage on their chips at the moment. Um, uh, D Chambi is saying they got 160 frames on Apex. I don't know why you need that many frames, but that's incredible. Uh, workstations are all, actually, this is a good one, Ben. Workstations are also useful. So, in this case, for um, kids out there who might not know, what would a workstation look like? So, is it a workstation sort of desktop? Yeah, let's just assume it's an office workstation that they're talking about. So, yeah, so it can desktop. sort of vary. Um, you can still go the custom build sort of desktops like this, but what we generally use in most office environments is what we call an Intel NUC, and they're generally about that big. Yeah. And that's the total size of the computer. And it just and runs everything. It runs everything. So they don't oh. have dedicated graphics, which is the floor for them for being used for a gaming machine. Mm. But for an office computer, they can still run three 4K monitors without a problem. And they'll do everything in offices after. I do have a question about the FPS. Is there any use in having very high FPS if your monitor is capped at like 80 or 100? <laughs> um, you can still have the, the the very high FPS, but mm. to be honest, you won't sort of see the uh, yeah. benefits of it if you're capping mm. your monitor. There's also things to consider such as refresh rates on monitors and that sort of thing. Um, personally, I do have a 240 hertz monitor. It's set at 144 hertz because I yeah. cannot see the difference between yeah. 144 and 240. Some people yeah. can, I just can't. Yeah. So I opted to go for 144 hertz and achieve more frames. Yeah, no, I was exactly the same when I bought my monitors. I, I ended up picking up two uh, because they ran 144 hertz at 2K resolution, uh, which is more than enough. I don't need 4K yet. Um, yep. especially with the majority of PC, PC games being more optimized for 2K rather than 4K. Um, so yeah, like if somebody tries to tell you kids, it's like buy a 4K monitor, you, you typically don't really need a 4K monitor unless you're going to actually connect your console to it because then a console sort of makes a difference. But yeah, it's a, a dis display resolution and rates are, are, are an interesting field and probably a whole other conversation that we could have. Um, we have somebody saying that there's a big Minecraft tournament going on. Uh, good for Minecraft. Feels like they could have more money behind it because it is Microsoft money. Um, my PC gets 300 frames, but a 60 hertz monitor. You are not going to see this 300 frames <laughs> of that monitor. Unfortunately uh, not. No, unfortunately not. Um, I think we did just see a brief interaction between uh, two different users about what the storage for the computer was, which was a solid state drive. Um, and now for if kids wanted to buy like just a cheap unit to, you know, start their journey into playing or developing games or streaming all the you know the multiple facets of games that are out there um could they start with you know maybe just pre-building different parts from all over the place trying to cost save or should they stick with that that one pre-built unit you were saying that maybe fits the bare minimum of, of where they can start and going from there i would probably recommend still sticking with the pre-built that sits mm -hmm. at sort of minimum of where they can start. The mm -hmm. problem with mix and matching is whilst it yeah. can work well, you can also have to deal, especially if you're buying secondhand parts with failures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Going with a pre-built from one of your big suppliers, you generally end up with it gets shipped to you, it's tested before it comes to you, mm -hmm. and you know it's going to work. Obviously, you've still got the, the fun that could be a courier dropping it for you, just to be helpful. <laughs> I would hope not, but um, yeah. when it comes to uh, the actual machines, they're generally you're going to get what you pay for. I feel like you're, you're speaking from experience there with the with the dropped computer. <laughs> Did you see a courier drop one of your computers, Ben? I've not seen a courier drop anything per yeah. se, but I have had stuff arrive in boxes yeah. and I just have to go, how is this still alive? Oh my gosh, yep. that, that's... Um... I um, definitely have to like agree with you in terms of like buying a pre-built and then kind of the security of the part. So I bought mine pre-built from PB Tech and then one day it just didn't turn on. And I couldn't figure it out. So I could just take it there and they looked through all of it because it all came, the whole PC came from one place. Whereas if you're buying bits and pieces from different areas, then it's a bit difficult trying to figure out what's broken and then kind of getting that back in service. So yeah, I, I agree for people who aren't really like, um, who are new, perhaps it's better to just buy pre-built and then tinker a little bit maybe. That's a really great call, Co. Um, we see some in the chat. I'm probably going to save up a bit more. Well, I'm glad you've been listening to Ben and what he's been sharing with us this morning. Um, another user said that they got theirs from Voltatech. Um, very cool. Hardcore Hypixel has said, what is that GPU? What is that GPU that you have in front uh, of you? That's an older one. That's an RX 480. Oh, an RX 480. Oh, 
okay when you said older one i didn't think it would be that old holy heck uh, <laughs> i'm just gonna pull out some notes from one of my discord channels because of course uh the, I, I think it's the summer game fest is currently running right now in the states but i'm very excited to know that final fantasy 7 part 2 has finally been announced um if you guys recall from the start of the week uh, when we asked what are our favorite games, I said Final Fantasy VII straight away. Uh, because I am very predictable and very emo. But on that note, Ben, what is your favorite game of all time? Of all time? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a tricky question. I've played everyone, a lot everyone of games. Thinks it's very big. Um, but I, I, I found myself um, able to focus on, like, you know, uh, Final Fantasy VII having such a big emotional impact on me. Kahu, can you recall what yours was? My favorite game. Well, did you say Hearthstone or Overwatch? <laughs> um, it's <laughs> what I'm playing a lot at the moment. Yeah. Um, I do like Overwatch. It yeah. depends on what I'm playing. If it's my PC, Overwatch yeah. is pretty fun. So um, there, there's some examples there, Ben. So what, on that note, what would you think it would be? Um, I have played a, a rather ridiculous amount of Overwatch, Minecraft, <laughs> MOBAs. i played yeah. a lot. Yeah. Probably the favourite, if I had to go off the number of hours, would probably be Dota 2. Dota 2. Wow. There, there you go. Dota, I don't think we've heard much uh, mention of Dota this week. Have we, Kahu? A lot, lot of no. League of Legends. Yeah, but not oh, Dota. Not Dota. Not I have Dota. played League of Legends, but uh, I'll start Dota. the debate now and just say I prefer a bit of a difficult game, so I play Dota 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, yes. We're punching. We're punching. <laughs> um, just for people who are go- considering going out to buy, in their own, to buy their own PC. Um, can you give us some advice on how to like make sure that the people we're buying it from are reputable and know what they're doing? Like, are there any red flags that might say, actually, this is dodgy, it could be a scam, or they might not actually know what they're doing? Yeah, to be honest, um, if it's your first time sort of going into this sort of thing, I'd probably avoid your Facebook marketplaces and stuff like that. I do know people that have got a lot of experience in computers that still get ripped off. Um, personally, I would recommend going well in your bigger brand sort of companies like your PB Tech, your Play Tech, your computer lounges. They've been around a long time, they've done their job for a long time, and they've definitely got the reviews to follow up with as well. Um, that's a really um, great way of putting it. And for those in the chat who didn't realize after all this time that PB Tech is called pre built technology. That's why they're called PB Tech. So once I put that together one day, I was like, oh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. So um, no, Ben, it has been such a pleasure having you here this morning. Thank you for joining Kahu and I for this final day of getting into games. That was a lot of really great information. We really love the feedback and chat about your guys' own personal units you had there at home. Um, and yeah, that that mouse story. I hope you guys all remember that mouse story because that, that is a fantastic story. Um, I'm actually personally trying to forget it. So, <laughs> As for ourselves, of course, we will be back at 11 a.m. with, uh, is it Dungeons and Dragons, I believe? We're going to be talking about Dungeons mm, and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's about Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Wow. It's uh, a revelation <laughs> for you guys out there. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that session uh, with our good friend Ben Baker, uh, who, of course, looks after all the technology here at Digital Natives Academy, who helped us make this incredible Get Into Games Aotearoa 2022. We will see you back here at 11am. Until then, kakite.